anyways, so today uh, we're going to cover a subject that's important, vitally important, not only for my business, but every one of your businesses out there. It doesn't matter if it's you know electrical, plumbing, HVAC, whatever it is. The membership is the lifeblood of the business, and I know you guys heard you know another talking head a couple months back saying, "Oh, memberships are dead." Memberships are not dead, right? And memberships are going to be a vital part of your entire business. And the companies that understand this and learn how to do it properly are the companies that are going to succeed, that are going to win, and they're also going to sell for the highest dollar. So one of the first things we have to do and think about as a membership is how do we build a culture around it, right? Because far too many places they go and it's like the membership is like the back burner, right? They're, they care about revenue, 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 right? And they're not really thinking about the membership. You know, they might get them here and there. They're not tracking them. So this is one thing I'm going to challenge you guys to do today is figure out right now where you guys stand on memberships, right? What is your percentage, your closing percentage on memberships? Some of you guys might be at 10%, 15%, 20%, 30%, 30 whatever it is. You've got to figure out that number today. What is my benchmark? And why is that important? And why do I ask that question? I ask it to a lot of my clients is because I got to know where you're starting at, right? What, where is your company at today? Because you can't fix anything unless you measure it, right? And track it. So first we got to figure out today is figure out what is my membership closing percentage and what is a membership call, right? What do I consider a membership call? And for me in my business, I consider a membership call, any service call that we go to a repair or a tune up that is no, not currently on our membership. So they could have been a past customer they could be a new customer, but anybody, doesn't matter the age of the equipment, doesn't matter what city they're in, doesn't matter anything other than are they a current member and are, are we going to a service call or are we going to a, a tune-up, a diagnostic or a tune-up, right? So on that is how we're going to judge it. So on every diagnostic and tune-up that we go to that is not a member currently, our job is to turn them into a member, okay? So I would figure out that number today. What is your percentage on that currently? My my KPI that I'm looking for is a 50%. So 50% is a, seems like a lot to a lot of people. Man, 50% closing percentage on that is high. It's not high. It's possible. It's doable. It happens day in and day out here. Um, companies that I've worked at in the past, service champions, bare minimum is 50% or you don't get to work there. Uh, my company, we bonus it off of a 60%. So if you hit 60%, you get a bonus because 50% should be done. 60% is extraordinary, right? So we want to bonus it off of something that's extraordinary. Uh, what does KPI mean, Joey? Don't worry about that. So he's new to the he's new to the business. KPI is a uh, key performance indicator. So we know what's what's going on inside of our business. So right now, today, find out where you guys stand on your membership sales. What are my percentages? And then from there, we have to work as a team and start building a plan on how we're going to build a culture to up that right. And the way that that you're able to incentivize obviously membership sales is first and foremost, we have to put it top of mind. So when my guys call in and they say, I'm setting a lead, right? If my guy said, my technician goes to a call first time out and he does a tune up or a diagnostic and he sets a lead for replacement, my very first question that's asked is, did you sell the membership? Because if they didn't sell the membership, the likelihood of that lead selling drops dramatically, right? Because if they sold the memberships, that means they sold that, com that customer on our company. They want to They want to have us out again. They sold us on, on future business. If I'm a sales guy and they said, hey, I turned a lead, it's a 20-year-old unit, it's non-op, they signed up on the membership, that's a lead I want. That's a top priority lead. Now, if they didn't sell the membership, that means they didn't sell the value of the company and why they should have this unit service and why that new unit should be serviced. So we got to lean back into that. So first thing for us, when we have that communication, we set our KPI for the month and our bonuses are built around it. And a lot of people are like, well, how do you bonus it, right? Well, for us, obviously, we want revenue, right? Everybody likes revenue. Revenue is great. But on top of that revenue, I got to have other key performance metrics that I, that I track that they get bonused off of. Because guess what? Anybody can have a great month on, on revenue, right? Oh, man, this guy all of a sudden he had five random sales and he got a $200,000 month. Well, what are the other things that he, that he tracked? Because for me to get bonuses, you have to hit a success rate, a certain success rate. You got to hit a certain club membership percentage. Things that drive my business, right? Because if I get a couple big sales, congratulations, but the rest of my calls I burn, it doesn't help me. So same thing with the membership, right? So we got to figure out where your base point is with your business. Maybe your base point right now is all of your technicians are at 20% on average is where you're selling memberships. Don't take your bonus and go make it 50% day one because guess what? No one in your business is doing that now. How can you expect them to get there? What that's going to do is start beating down the psyche of your sales team and your technicians in the house like, I got I to gotta get 50% to get a bonus now? That sucks. 
So maybe right now you have a bonus in place for revenue, right? Keep that bonus in place for revenue. Make sure it's the right level of revenue that you're making the money back to get that bonus and make sure your gross profits, right? But tie that revenue now, tie it into something else. Make it a kicker, right? So for me, if my guy hits a revenue number, say $200,000 of revenue, that was his goal. And if he did that, he gets a bonus. But if his club memberships are below 60%, he loses half of that bonus. So he's going to take some of it away. So we have to give some of these guys something to chase because if you focus on it, right, where focus grows, those things will start growing, like your club member percentage. So I would take my, my median, my median uh, percentage, say it's 20%, and guess what? Next month, my bonus number is 30%, right? You guys get up to 30%, you'll get your bonus. Once everybody gets to that 30% is, you start moving that marker, right? You start moving the marker, and the, as the marker moves, the guys get used to it. They start getting they start getting accustomed to selling membership. They get they start making it part of their process, part of their day and their day in day out of the calls. And I'm going to go into how to sell it on calls. But if we don't put something in place to motivate them first, you're never going to get them to sell it. If it's if it's not a big deal in your business, you guys aren't tracking it. Guess what? No matter what I sell them and teach them, they aren't going to give a shit. Okay, so we got to get these guys to understand why they're important, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But we have to get them to understand that they are incentivized to sell them, not just a little spiff they get per membership, but they have to be incentivized to sell a high percentage of them to where they're going to fight for it, right? The more memberships you have, the more money you're going to make, the more customers you're going to have. Uh, there will be a replay of this, Arturo, uh, but right now I'm just going into this. So anyway, so now we, we found out that our base point is 20%. We want to get it up to 30. So now we set that bonus in place. On top of that, we start having training on it because guess what? If you don't train on it, you can't you can't expect them to grow from it. You can't expect them to get better without any kind of training. And I'll go over, like I said, we'll go for the process in it. But we need to be talking about memberships all the time. I would suggest having uh, stack rankings in every meeting, right? Uh, when I came in as a technician at Service Champions, we had a stack ranking, right? Say there's 20 technicians and they would rank us. Dude, rank your memberships. So many guys only rank their revenue but they don't rank their memberships. Rank your memberships. People do not like to be last. People do not like to be second, third, fourth, fifth. They want to be number one. So if you start putting that in front of them every meeting and the guy that's on the bottom, make them understand. I would get, I would say, hey, these guys are above this percentage are in green. Make Maybe get a spin or something like that to spin every time they show up in a meeting and they're, they're over the green, right? And the guys in the red don't get anything. I guarantee you the more you show it in front of them, the more you embarrass them, the more they're going to want to get better. Right, so we got to start moving the needle little by little, little by little, until we start getting it part of our culture. On top of that is the training, right? Teaching the guys what's in it. If your guys do not know your membership like the back of their hand, you haven't done your job. Uh, so that means you should be having membership training day in and day out. Talk about it, right? In my company, we talk about that we are a service company, not a repair company. And what does that mean? Well, the reason we're a service company rather than a repair company, most other contractors in our area are repair companies. They only want to go out when your stuff's broken. Absolute Airflow, we want to be there before it's broken and make sure it doesn't happen. And that's why we're a service-based company. We come out, we service these units. 90% of our calls that we run are service calls to prevent the other calls from breaking, from breaking the units down. The unit breaks down, it costs you a lot more money. I'd rather service this thing and make it last as long as possible and, and then be there for the day that you do need one. And we'll go into the benefits of the membership and how that's going to how it's going to bring it along. But we got to really start talking about being a service based company. We want your unit to last as long as possible. Our guys are based. Our job is based on making sure these things last as long as possible. That's why we have so many memberships. Why we have so many customers because we make them last longer while the other guys are waiting for it to break down so they can replace it. Do you see how we can change that mindset and that psyche that customer? Right. I thought memberships were dead. Yeah, yeah, Alan. We. That guy's an idiot. Anyways, memberships are not dead. We'll go back to it. So anyways, now we're still on the psyche on it. Now we have to figure out what our benefits are, right? Inside of membership benefits, and, and I have you know a sheet, part of our, obviously, our, our Profit Rocket Business Blueprint, we have our membership forms, what's included in it, stuff like that. But we really got to add things in there that are going to intrigue customers. And far too many companies, they only add one or two things, right? But you only get uh, tune-ups. You get two tune-ups a year. Okay, what else do you get? Oh, I only get uh, discounts on repairs. I only get this. I only get this, right? I want to give multiple options on things they can get because guess what? Not every customer is the same. I want to have, well, this customer might not care about the tune-ups, but he cares about the discounts. This customer might not care about the discounts, but he cares about 24-hour service, right? Or he might care about this, 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 and this. Yes, we do set a goal of memberships for the year and month. Yes, Mike. 
So that's part of our KPI that we are tracking. And we set a goal in place for my business to get bonus at 60% to work for me at 50%. So a couple of the benefits that we have in here, we have our, we have our, obviously we have a furnace tune-up. If you live in, you know, a place where there's furnaces, we offer a furnace tune-up. Some of you guys are in Florida, things like that, where it's mostly heat pumps. Uh, but ours is going to cover a furnace tune-up before the, before the winter, AC tune-up before the, AC tune-up before the summer. Uh, we also include a water heater and uh, full house plumbing inspection because we have a plumbing department. So my HVAC techs are setting, selling memberships and then flipping those leads to the plumbers. Plumbers are coming out and obviously trying to upsell and learn and obviously get opportunities in the house. We also offer a free inside of our membership. You get a free attic and, and crawl space uh, inspection, right? It gives us a reason on why we're going into your attic, why we're doing our inspection. So we want to put that in there. Hey, if you guys ever need anything, we can come out for an inspection in your attic, your crawl space for you. We have a 24 hour response time. So what that means is that you call in, you become front of line for us. So if another customer that's never done business with us, not a member calls in and, they, and their air conditioner is broken down, they have a, they have a date. You call in the same day or after them, we're going to move them and put you ahead of them, right? We're going to give you that. We're going to give you that 24 hour response time. If we don't get there within 24 hours, you only pay half price for repairs. So we don't get them repair for free, but we'll pay. We'll give. We'll give you half the price if I can't get out there within 24 hours. Most of the time that we can, we can get out there. Some of you guys might want to extend that. Extend that to 48 hours, whatever you want to put it for your business. If you're a member, we also give you priority installation. If you buy an air conditioner from us today, we're going to install it tomorrow, right? Really basic stuff. This isn't like I'm reinventing the freaking wheel. Um, obviously, I'm gonna re I'm gonna kind of go over a lot of how we sell it in the house, but we got to get the benefits down first and figure out what's gonna fit within your business. Uh, priority installation. We have a guaranteed service window. If you're a member of ours, you get a two hour service window. If we miss that service window, you don't pay. Okay, so we're we're like it's like the 30 minutes or less pizza place. Uh, also, on there we have a transferable plan. So a lot of our members, oh, we're moving or we're doing this, we're doing that. Cool. If you are moving, we have this benefit. This actual membership can transfer over to your new house. Included in that, we will do a full plumbing and AC inspection and furnace inspection in your new house before you moved in. Make sure you don't have any issues as long as you're within our service area. So this helped us get guys to sell memberships, even though they're selling the house or whatever it is. Boom. Now we still now we're moving into that new house. We're going to inspect the new house and get an opportunity there. Um <clears throat> diagnostic charge, they get, they get, obviously they get discounts on, on the diagnostic charge, right? So instead of charging $99 for us to come out, you get a free diagnostic charge. You have a, you have an issue going on. You don't pay any money for us to come out there to come look at it. Uh, this could be, I always tell customers, well, maybe you have your thermostat went bad or the batteries in your thermostat went bad, right? Cool. My thermostat went, my batteries, in my thermostat went bad and I'm on a membership. You're not paying the hundred bucks for me to come out there and look at it. I'm going to put some new batteries in for you and head on out. Right? We're going to take care of our customers for the little stuff and the big stuff. Um, on top of that, we get repair discounts. So for us, anything you buy from us and you're a member, you get 15% discount on it. Whether it's a new system replacement or it's a, or it's a repair, repair on the air conditioner, repair on the furnace, whatever it is, you save 15% off of those repairs as long as you're on a membership. So obviously, this is for the, the payment customers. But we got to find different things that get into to each, each section, right? Uh, we also, if you're a member, we offer an extended labor, uh, parts and labor warranty. As long as you're our member and your membership doesn't last or lapse, so it doesn't cancel at any time or anything like that, if you buy a part from us and that part breaks again while you're still on the membership, you get the part for free. We'll give you a lifetime warranty on it. Well, what if their capacitor blows again? Well, I don't care. I charge enough for a capacitor that if I get back out there, it's another opportunity for me to sell it. If I have the same part go bad in the system twice, Guess what? That system probably needed to be replaced anyway. So we're going to have that conversation when I get out there. But yes, yeah, so if I go, if I go there and I replace a capacitor, or I can replace a fan motor on your AC right now, and you stay a member. As long as you're a member, if that fan motor or that capacitor fail, not test bad or whatever, as soon as they fail, I'll replace it for you. Why is this powerful, right? Well, what if I'm on an eight-year-old system, right? I'm on an eight-year-old system, and they're like, "Well, my AC is still under warranty. My parts are under warranty, right?" Okay, that's great. When does your manufacturer cover the warranty? Oh, when it when it breaks down. Okay, so you have to wait till it completely breaks down. It's 100 degrees outside. Then I can't get out to you right away to fix it. Then I got to take that part. I got to take it to the manufacturer. Then they got to give me a new part to put it back into your air conditioner. So now you're two, three days without air conditioning over a part that you got for free. And you still got to pay the labor for me to do it. Oh, I didn't think about that. The cool thing is I'm already here. I got the part on my truck. The cool thing is if you buy my part today, it's not that much more money if you, if you were to just pay the labor for the other one. We put it in today. If anything breaks on it again, it's changed out right away. Anything goes wrong, you call us. We're going to take care of it for you. 
Peace of mind for customers allows us to sell repairs on units that are still, I guess, technically within the warranty area. Uh, but the customer understands like, hey, look, you can wait till the warranty breaks, but most of these things are planned obsolescence, right? Tell, wait till it breaks down, wait till the hottest day of the year, whatever it is when it's going to fail. We just take care of it now. You're going to pay roughly around the same price, but you're going to be on our lifetime warranty on it. Um, on top of that, uh, our membership fee, whatever, whatever money you spend on my membership, is going to go directly towards replacement. So say I sign you up on a membership, you got a five-year-old unit, you go the next five years, right? Five years, you stay on the membership. My membership's $20 a month. So $20, $19.95 a month times 12 times five, you'll get $1,000, $1,100 or $1,200 goes towards replacement of that new system whenever you are ready to do it. So now you've got a savings plan for a new one. Along the way, we're going to tune up your units for free. We're going to make sure it lasts as long as possible. We're going to discount you any repairs that you need. And then God forbid that day it fails, it fails on you, you're going to get a replacement of it. Okay, so we have all these benefits that are built into our membership. And the reason they're built in there is there, there's a multiple different reasons. As you guys can see, it could be a service base, it could be a discount, it could be a, us being able to sell parts before, you know, when, when they're not, when it's nine years old, not 10 years old, whatever it is. All these little benefits give us something to lean on in the house to try to sell product. On top of it, the customer is going to get a great benefit, right? They're getting all these discounts. They're getting the, they're getting the services done. They're getting all these pluses on it. So now we got to get our employees to buy in on the membership, right? Believe in it. The other thing we have to get our employees to believe in is that they want to work year-round. Unlike some of your companies, right? I have, I have a four-year-old business. My guys are running, we're running right now 70 calls a day, okay? 70 calls a day with no weather on a four-year-old business. Because we built up our memberships, we built up our customer list that we're able to continue to go out there day in and day out, right? We can outbound our customer list and stay busy. Well, that's because we built a service-based business rather than a repair respond business, right? So now, now we've built this base up and we have, we have a customer list. So we have to talk to our employees and talk about, hey, don't you like working year-round where you're, the, the, the other technicians down the street aren't, are sitting at home not running calls? We're running calls 24 hours a day or we're running calls seven days a week or six days a week, whatever it is, right? That's why these, these memberships are important to make sure you have work year round. So you really have to sell the employee on the fact that you're not only benefiting them today, but you're benefiting them of the future, right? This business is going to grow. As we grow and we get more memberships, do you think we're going to get more, more employees or less employees? More employees. As we get more employees and you're here before them, what's going to happen to you? Are you going to go up or are you going to go down on the totem pole? Normally, if you're doing everything right, you're going to go up on the totem pole. So this is going to open you for opportunities to get better in business or get better a better position within our business, right? So now the employee understands what's in it for me. I can get a bonus, right? Also, I'm going to guarantee that I have work year-round. What else? And we're also going to get spiffed on it, right? So you got to put a spiff onto those memberships, whether it be 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever it is. Or say they sign up on the membership as twenty dollars a month. You give them that first first month uh, fee, right? You say here it's twenty bucks. You get the twenty bucks for signing it up. After that, whatever it is, it, it goes forward. For us, my employees get paid again the following year as long as they stay a member for a year. They get another spiff at the end of that year, and that's forever as long as they stay on it. So now we've created a process where these we're trying to retain customers. We're trying to retain memberships, right? Because if you sell the membership and they cancel, it's not fun. So that's why it's vitally important as we're selling memberships is that we are selling a membership, not on a discount. So many of you guys, your employees are in the house right now. They're only selling the membership so that customer can get a discount today. Is that really a membership sale? No, it's not really a membership sale. Uh, sorry. Sorry for all the questions. Do you send the tech that sold the membership to that house or do you, you guys have dedicated to memberships? No. So we... It depends, right? The customer requests a, mem uh, a technician, we will, uh, but also we we're going by, we're really going to go off of, you know, best call, best tech, right? Right, right call, right guy. Uh, so if he sells a membership to a two-year-old system, I'm not sending my best guy out there, right? I'm going to send one of my maintenance techs or whatever it is. So we have different levels. Uh, we dispatch based on age, location, and uh, obviously what type of call type it is, tune-up diagnostic. Uh, but we're not going to stick the same. We're not going to stick my my top technician on a brand. You know, he sold this. Maybe he sold the system, sold the membership at the same time. I'm not sticking my top technician on that call again. We're going to have our maintenance, our younger guys that are learning and grooming on those calls. So that's what that's what I would send to those. So, anyways, we got we got our employees to buy into it. They understand the benefits. We train on it constantly, right? 
for my business, if you're below 50% on, or below, I think it was like 45% on membership sales, you have to come to a meeting four days a week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 7 a.m. They got to be in here doing club membership training, right? Guess what? They're not going to fucking, they're not, they're going to start selling memberships, right? If they have to sit through training day in and day out. No one wants to be here at 7 a.m. every day. And that's how we're going to get them to push back where we are. But we have to understand the memberships are the forefront of the business. The memberships are important. So the memberships do matter. We got to make sure we, we push them. And if the employees don't understand, like literally they can sell a $25,000 system. I said, did you sell the membership? Right? Really hammer it home. Every conversation, everything should be leading with the membership. They turn to lead. Did you sell the membership? If you sold the system, did you sell the membership? Now, membership sales aren't just on the technician, right? This has to be a process throughout the entire business. From when you answer the phones, like right now I'm redoing my phone system. So when the people are calling and they're on hold, hey, while you're on hold, just so you know, to ask about our membership. Your membership will give you a discount. So changing the phone up, so when the customers are hearing, they're hearing about memberships. When they're talking on the phone and my CSR is answering, they ask, they're asking them, hey, are you currently one of our members? And you know, if you have service tie these other ones, it'll pop up in there and it'll tell you if they're a member or not. But still ask, hey, are you a member of ours, right? If they're not a member, that call center rep should be talking about the benefits of the membership as they're booking the call. Hey, when my technician's out there, make sure to talk to them about our membership. We offer this, this, and this. Give them some pointers on it. The, the office might be able to sell them. If the office is able to sell them, that's great. I prefer my technician to sell them just because I understand my technicians can explain it better in the house and show them why. But I'm not against a, a, a office staff member selling your memberships. I know Uncle Joe does some cool stuff with... Uh, with like different levels of memberships and if you buy it we get out there today i try to keep it simple right technicians already have a complicated job they're already trying to figure out stuff i want to keep it one membership keep it simple that's what i do do you offer a free one-year membership with an install uh no we do not offer any free memberships in my business all memberships need to be paid for all services need to be paid for so giving away a free membership doesn't do anything right if there's no value there's no monetary value behind that membership calling that customer and booking them is impossible anyways so everything that we do has to have a monetary value behind it. Otherwise, it's 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 not it's just it's whatever. It might only it might not even might as well not even be a membership. So sell the membership. If it's a one year old, they still need service, right? If it's a two year old, brand new, whatever it is, because we're talking about taking care of the units, trying to make them last longer. How the manufacturer recommends service, we should be selling that membership because they should be paying for our services. It just needs to happen. And the cool thing is, you've got a brand new unit. We're going to make sure this thing lasts forever. And guess what? You go 10, 15, 20 years down the road and you stay on our membership, you're going to get all that money back anyways. You move to a new house, you take that money, you transfer it to the new home. So these are options that we have within the membership. Cool. Already 20 minutes in. So now that we've... Hold on. Do you perform the first tune-up right when they sign up? How do you combat them canceling two months later? Okay, so... Most of the time we're already on the call, so we're gonna charge them for the service that we're there for. So most of my calls that we're running, I would say are tune-ups. So we're going out there for a first time out tune-up. We're charging them for the tune-up now, and then we're charging them for future service, right? And in our contract, it talks about it. If you get a discount today, and our Blueprint members will get a, have access to this membership contract, right? Um, if, you get, if, you, uh, if you sign up on a membership today and you get a discount, and you cancel within that first six months, we will bill you and we, we are able to bill you for the difference of what, what you saved today. So we got to get them to stay on for six months minimum, but we really just always are talking about service. If someone tries to cancel, we have a cancellation department for memberships. So we're trying to save that membership to make sure it doesn't happen. The reason why memberships cancel is because of a lack of business, right? A lack of business structure or processes, because if people understand that you're selling them a service, they're far more likely to stay on. Now, if you're, if you're just selling the membership for the discount and they don't talk about service and ongoing service and how important it is, then it doesn't matter. Or if you go out there for a tune-up, you go out there for the first tune-up after, the, after they sold the membership or whatever, and you don't do a proper tune-up, you don't do anything, you just go in there and you try to sell them stuff, they're not going to stay on, right? You have to make sure you're providing a high-level tune-up, right, every time you go out there. And this is stuff that we teach within the Blueprint as well. How do you run a proper tune-up? When my guys run a proper tune-up, they know, my customers know that we're different than our competitors. They know that we are a better company. They know that we provide better service. They don't want to go anywhere else because once they do a tune-up with us and they have somebody else come out there and he's in there in and out in 20 minutes with a flashlight and not doing anything, they're not going to do business with them. They're only going to do business with us. So you have to make sure your tune-up process is dialed in and this is how you make money. So many of you guys are sitting around right now waiting for fucking Google to send you leads. Dude, surprise, surprise, 
You're not going to be getting leads right now. You need to be outbounding your customers and running tune-ups and running tune-ups the proper way to get them to create money. We're running, like I said, 50 tune-ups a day right now, probably. Then we have our demand calls coming in here and there. But tune-ups is where the bread and butter is. This is where the big boy companies grow. Too many small companies sit around and they're like, my, my, uh, my marketing's not working. There's no weather. I'm like, dude, who the hell's Googling air conditioning right now? Who's Googling furnace repair? Who's Googling the stuff that you need? They're not. So you have to be outbound calling all day long to make sure you're keeping those boards filled. So as you're getting in the house, one of the biggest things I like to do is have a membership form to use, right? If you have a membership form to use, then that customer has a, a physical piece of paper they can use in the house, right? So many guys are on Service Titan, Sarah, whatever it is, and they only have their tablets. Dude, having personal touch, personal paper, I know we don't want to use paper, the membership helps with paper, right? And I have it, I have it to where they, when they sign it, they get a copy, I get a copy. People like that organic feel to it, but it's also easier to take this paper and sell it in front of that customer, right? If you're going to say here on this iPad, you want this membership and they just get this email and it's not really personal, a lot of those are going to cancel. A lot of those aren't going to be done right. If I get them with a paper and I have it in front of them and I can keep putting it in front of them over and over throughout the call. Oh, hey, and we'll go through it right now. I got another... 10, 15 minutes. So we'll go through it real quick on the membership. So if I'm coming out to a call, when do we talk about a membership? We talk, we talk about it early and often, right? Memberships should be starting from the beginning till the end. We're talking about membership. We're talking about service. We're talking about how we do things and why they got to do this and how the manufacturer recommends it. We got to be doing this the entire time. So if my technicians get to the house, obviously we're going to go into the tune-up process first, right? or repair call process, whatever it is. I have all these processes documented in the blueprint. But when we get into the house, we're not going in. At, well, the first thing we're going to ask them is, hey, you know, is this the first time we, or when was the last time that we serviced your air conditioner, right? It's one of the questions I ask on a tune-up or a diagnostic or whatever it is, especially on, on a first time out, I ask, when was the last time we serviced it? The only reason I ask, Mrs. Smith, is because we do things a little bit, little bit different here at Absolute Airflow. Unlike most companies that are in and out within 20 to 30 minutes, uh, most of our calls take anywhere between 60 to 90 minutes, depending on the condition of the unit. Because my goal when I leave here, I can get this thing back to factory fresh. So it's going to take me a little extra time to clean it out today. Do you know the last time that we serviced it or is it someone else that did it in the past? And they'll say, well, someone else did it. Okay, what was that process like? Start asking questions early, right? So then once we start getting into it, we start taking the unit apart. Say it's an AC tune-up. I go through my temperature splits. I go through all that stuff. I go look at the unit. I ask all my questions. Go get my tools and I get to work. As soon as I get the top off that air conditioner, I start cleaning it out. I bring that customer out. And I'm going to, I'm going to show them what I'm doing. And I said, when was the last time this was done? Well, the last guy just came and hosed it out from the outside. Well, no, this air conditioner needs to be cleaned from the inside out to make sure we get all that dirt and dust out of the system. Right. And this is part of our service that we offer on our club memberships. Every time, normally I would charge for me to clean this out like this, but I'm going to take care of it for you. It's the first time we've been out here. But the cool thing, if you're a member, you get this for free. Did the office talk to you about my membership at all? And this is going to be the first touch point on the membership. We're going to start talking about it at the, at the air conditioner, right? We're going to talk about it at the condenser. But we're not going to give them the paper yet. We're just going to talk about membership. You know these are supposed to be serviced once a year. Do you know this is supposed to be serviced? Did you, has anybody ever serviced this? Keep bringing these little things up about service, and those, all of a sudden they're going to start really listening, right? As we go out to our car, obviously I got the air conditioning. If you guys have ever been through my tune-up process, I got the air conditioner cleaned out. Everything's looking nice. It's drying out. At this point is when I do my attic inspection. This is when I'm going to first give them my membership form, right? My membership form for the first time is going to go to that customer. After I go get my ladder, I'm going to check the attic. I say, hey, Mrs. Smith, by the way, here's some information on that membership. Can you go ahead and fill it out for me? Why do I say it like that? Hey, here's the information. Go ahead and fill this out for me. I want them to start filling out that membership. If they start filling it out, that shit's sold, right? So I'll use, I'll give it to them and I'll start filling it out. Have them start filling out the membership form as if, if they start filling it out right away, awesome, right? Go into your attic, do your duct inspection, attic inspection, come back out. At this point is when you're, uh, so obviously I'm skipping some steps in this, but come out of the attic. Now we're all dirty. Now we're, we're going to go and show them all the things that we found on the outside. We're going to show them the, the, the contactors. We're going to show them the pricing and all this stuff. We're going to show them the duct work. As we're sitting at the table, I ask them again, right? Hey, were you able to get that membership form filled out for me? A lot of times the customer is going to say, oh, yeah, I'm just going to keep it. I'll talk to my wife later. But, well, Mrs. Smith, that's actually my last form. So I'm going to need to take that back. Just let the office know if you want to sign up on the membership. I thought you were trying to save some money today, right? 
I do a takeaway with them. Hey, that's a, if you're not going to fill it out today, you know, let's just go ahead and take it away. You'd be surprised how many times it cost, or some, I already know the next couple, next customer is probably going to want to sign up, so I'm going to need that form. I take it away from the customer. You'd be surprised how many times they snatch it back and say, hey, let me get you signed up for it. But we really have to be adamant about it. So now we get to the table and we're going through all this stuff. And then the membership, maybe the customer says, well, I don't want to do the membership. Well, Taylor, don't, didn't, you know, during the process, remember I showed you all the things going on. You kind of agreed that this thing should be done. You know, it should be done every six months, just like the manufacturer recommends. Yeah. So maybe, maybe let me go through the membership through all the benefits for you, right? And you tell me which one of these kind of stands out, what's important to you, right? So obviously the first thing it's going to include is that furnace tune-up. And I know I'm out here for the AC today and, and I wish I had another hour and a half set up, set aside for the furnace tune-up. Uh, but we're, we usually try to get that done right before winter, before you go fired up for the first time. We found that just by getting that furnace cleaned out before this, before the winter time, that you and your family, you're not going to get sick as often during, during the winter, because what happens is, and like I showed you earlier with that coil, all that bacteria grows up during the summer and then you go light and you go heat it up in the winter. And that's when you guys start getting sick. So it includes that furnace, you know, free of charge. We come out, you don't pay us a penny to come out. It also is going to include next year's AC service. You agree that it needs to be done again, this again, next year, right? And I always nod my head. You agree it should get done again every year? Yes. On top of that, um, if we get signed up on the membership today, I can go ahead and schedule one of my plumbing plumbers that's in the area. He can get you scheduled for a water heater flush and a full plumbing inspection. This is included free of charge. If you ever have any issues uh, with it, we'll come out as free inspection on your on your heating on your plumbing system. Also, when we come out, it includes the duct or uh, the attic inspection. So we come out and do the attic inspection every time because I don't know about you, but I don't crawl into my attic, right? And and anything I have going on up there, I'd rather have someone else come check it out for me. So if you ever need us to come check it out, we'll come look in your attic for you. I had no charge. Uh, we also get a 24 hour response time. You told me you use this air conditioner a lot in the summertime. So what happens in the summer, and just like every other company in the whole area, right? Everybody, every company gets busy, gets booked out weeks. The cool thing is if you're a member of ours, you become priority. You're part of our family already. So if a new customer calls in today and they have a schedule for tomorrow and you call in later in that day and you need tomorrow, we're not pushing you out to the next day. We're going to go ahead and push you in that position because you're part of our family. You already joined our membership. Uh, and, and obviously, you, by you signing up the membership keeps me busy year round. So that's why my company likes to take care of you guys. You get priority installation. You start going through all the benefits of these. By the time you get to the bottom, the, the customer has already nodded enough times yes because you're shaking your head as you're going through it. So, Mr. Smith, you agree this is pretty important to get done? Perfect. Let's just go ahead and get you signed up for it. The cool thing is a six-month contract. If you don't like it after six months, so have us come out for our furnace tune-up. You don't, you don't agree that that furnace tune-up is important and this AC tune-up is not important, you can cancel at that time. Uh, but if you cancel any time between then and there, then we have, obviously we have to charge you for it. This is a six-month contract on here. After that, it's up to you. Most of our customers, when they see the service that we provide, they usually don't cancel. Our cancellation rates are below 5% on these memberships because people understand that they want to make these things last as long as possible. So anyway, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Obviously, there's other stuff that we can do within the house. <laughs> but I only have so much time and I'm losing my voice talking so much. So major important today, go in your business and figure out what your closing percentage is on memberships, right? This is a first time out customer or a repeat customer. Doesn't matter if you've been there 10 times. If they haven't signed up on the membership, that counts as a membership opportunity. If it's a first time out, it's a membership opportunity. Repair or diagnostic. Take those calls, figure out what those numbers are. A contract's a bad word, whatever you want to say, buddy. I saw a lot of them. I saw them. It's a contract. It's okay. Um, that's a, that's, that's a simple-minded thinking, Tom, that contracts, people don't care, right? You can say a contract, you can say whatever you want to say, membership, whatever you want to call it. Customers don't care as long as you're selling it the right way. Anyway, so circle back around, figure out what your club member percentage is and with your business. Take your, take your current bonus structure, tie your membership sales to it. Hey, if you're below 30%, you lose half, your, you lose half, of, your, uh, you lose half of your bonus, right? Or whatever it is, you got to start tying into it. Then we got to start training them on the benefits. Your employees should know the benefits inside and out. Um, I would really start hammering them on, on, on uh, training on it and then start making them take tests on it, right? Hey, test them on the membership. What's included? Make them write it down. Make them write down all the benefits of it. They write it down, they'll start remembering it. So make them write down the benefits, talk through it, go through some training on it. And then if they and then as they start getting better, start moving that bonus up to where you want it to be closer to that 50%. So... Anyways, any last questions on the on this call? I hope this uh, video helped you guys a little bit and get an idea of what you can do to help grow your memberships within your business. It's very important. Memberships are not dead. You need to make sure you're doing them. So go ahead and ask a couple questions. I got about five more minutes. 
when are you going to do this for a sales guy? Uh, you want a sales training? I think there's a couple of videos already in the group, but I can do a little bit of uh, like a process training. Uh, but this is what we do inside the uh, Profit Rocket Business Blueprint. If you guys check it out, call ProfitRocket.com. Uh, all these videos are in there. I got, we have almost like 300 videos or something like that in there. Any other questions, guys? Thank you guys for tuning in. This is the most I got 50, 51 people live on this thing. It's pretty cool, uh, especially in the middle of the day. So I'm going to be doing more trainings on this, different subjects, stuff like that. You guys can ask request subjects to me. Um, thanks, Chris. Chris is one of our Blueprint customers. He loves it. Cool. It looks like there's no questions. Last chance. All right, guys, thank you guys for joining. Invite more people to this group. This group, obviously, I want to grow it. I want to start offering more training. Uh, and also, if you guys aren't ready, next week, our tickets for Austin Profit Rocket 23 are coming up. This year's event, we're expecting 2,000 people. We're expecting to be sold out. I have some amazing speakers, amazing event, amazing after parties that we're going to be doing. And also next week, my prime supplements. If you guys are looking for, obviously, new supplements, check it out. I've been working on it for a long time, so we're really excited about it. Love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in.